It's 5 a.m. Your kid's hockey practice is in one hour. You know they should eat something. They should eat something, but but what? You're busy, they are hungry, and it's time to go. What do you do? In this episode of the podcast, I'm going to share with you guys how to feed a hockey animal or a wrestling, baseball, soccer, track, star, youth, athlete. I'll share that with you in this episode of the podcast. Shout out to my one of my mentors, Chris Cooper, who was the genesis of this conversation and this topic. So I'll share it with you guys in this episode. Stick around. Welcome to the CrossFit Edwardsville Community Podcast, where we hear and learn from our coaches, CrossFitters, and Glen Ed community leaders. Now, here are your hosts, Dallas and Greg. What is up, guys? In this episode, we're talking about youth nutrition for optimal performance. Like the example we used in the intro was, it's 5 a.m., your kid's hockey practice is in one hour. You know they should eat something, but, but what should they eat? Because you're busy. They aren't hungry. It's time to go. One last time, shout out to my mentor, Chris Cooper, who was the genesis of this topic, of this conversation, and a lot of the, the thought process here. So if you have kids who are in youth sports, like most of us here in our area, during tournaments, kids sometimes play three intense games in a single day, especially at the end of the tournament when there's more on the line. And nutrition is a really big key in how your kids play and feel. Like many parents believe their kids can just eat anything without affecting their performance. As a coach, I can attest to how wrong they are. A kid who fades out 40 minutes into practice will get 33% less coaching time because they're too tired to improve. A kid who's too hyper at the start of practice will usually distract the coach, maybe earn themselves a few laps, and then that distracts from his time to learn or her time to learn. Kids who don't eat breakfast simply don't play their best. Now, fortunately, there is a way to help fuel your kids and it doesn't involve force feeding them. Here are three components that you want to focus on as a parent of a youth athlete. Number one is protein. Protein builds muscles. On game day, eating protein can help by slowing down the absorption of the carbohydrates. Protein slows that breakdown, helping with more sustained energy levels over a long period of time, i.e. more energy for longer. Now you need protein and slash or fat to go with your carbs on game day. But what kind of carbs? That brings us to topic number two, carbs. Your body primarily runs on carbohydrates during sport, but like gas in a race car, you don't want to run out. If you're eating sugar, white flour, or fruit without anything else, you get this massive energy dump at the start at first, and then boom, gas runs out and you get nothing when you need it later on in the latter part of the game, latter part of the tournament. We want to keep your youth athletes' energy levels consistent, so we need quality carbs, veggies. Vegetables provide less roller coaster release and give you a steadier output of energy, especially when they're coupled with protein or fats. You got no energy crashes, no hyper episodes, just steady energy. What are some of the worst carbs to eat? Breakfast bars, muffins, bagels, avoid those. Those cheap, processed, highly refined carbohydrates, steer away from those. Topic number three, fat. Right off the bat, if you don't know, dietary fats don't make you fat. All of us, including kids, need fat in their diets, especially adults. You know, we're here in the winter time in particular, like our skin can dry out, our brain gets depressed in the winter time. Seasonal affective disorder is a real thing. We need that dietary fat to help us to navigate that. Fats are also a secondary energy source. When the carbs are gone, fats fuel the fire. Using nuts and seeds to provide healthy fats is a great idea. Or even bacon. Like I would rather coach a kid who had bacon for breakfast than one who had a bagel. For breakfast. Now, I want to talk something about the, the carb up myth. Some parents, some coaches believe that kids should carb up before a practice or a game and then feed them a bagel or pasta. This isn't true. It decreases performance. It should stop. It needs to stop. 
feeding a kid a bunch of grain-based food immediately before practice actually slows them down. Grains pull grains pull water out of the muscle into the stomach, which can cause cramps, can create this overfull feeling and sluggishness. If you want to slow down a racehorse, give them a pail of grain right before the race. Want to slow down your kid? Do the same. So if given a giant bowl of pasta the night before an early practice, your child's stomach will be clear, true, but the insulin spike from the carb-heavy meal will leave them highly prone to a sugar crash in the morning. They'll probably feel more tired, more crabby, more sluggish until they eat more sugar and then ride that roller coaster of spikes and valleys, peaks and valleys all day. Even most marathon runners who need prolonged energy levels, low levels, prolonged energy over several hours are starting to trend away from this bad habit and instead opt for a carbon, sorry, a combination of carbohydrates, protein, and fat the night before a race. Now, really interesting topic here. Adults tend to choose foods based on taste, but research shows this is not necessarily the case for kids. Kids make food choices based on the following three categories, the following three criteria in this order. Number one is novelty. Number two, texture. Number three is taste. Let's talk about each of those individually. Novelty. That can mean the appearance or activity surrounding the food or the presentation of the food. If you look at the packaging on kid food as an adult, you think the manufacturer went way overboard with the bright colors and the shooting stars, but they know better. They know better to a kid, the shiniest box contains the best tasting food. Now, luckily we can use that knowledge to advance a more positive agenda as well. Packaging food in a unique way, arranging it on the plate to make a picture, making it finger edible, placing it in a, a different spot in the house. Like kids' brains are wired to pay attention to novelty. These things all help. Filling a special hockey day bowl with grapes, nuts, egg whites to eat on the way to the rink, that could help. A picnic on the floor while sorting hockey equipment can also help. And a final tip. Turn off the TV. Turn off the TV while getting ready in the morning. No meal can compare to the shiny distractions on the screen. Letting kids choose their fruit in the grocery store can also help because their sense of ownership will combine with the novelty factor. So keep those things in mind. Let's talk about texture, number two. In the morning, consider sticking to crunchier, more texture-rich foods. Well, some kids will eat a banana or yogurt in the morning, it's interesting that cereal companies bank on how a food feels when you're consuming it. It's a psychological thing, but very few people wake up starving and eating soggy cereal is appealing anytime. So what is crunchy? Nuts or even fruit. Third item, taste. It has to taste good, but that doesn't mean you need a sugary cereal or a fake yogurt in tubes. Natural sugars like syrup and fake honey aren't necessarily better than table sugar, but fruit does go a long way. Now, your kid doesn't need a big breakfast and it does not have to be perfect every time. So take that pressure off of yourself. Some cut up fruit or raisins, a little handful of nuts, some egg whites, a stick of bacon will go a long way. Even let your child pick some of their ingredients for a smoothie with their favorite fruits and veggies along with maybe some of the Greek yogurt for the protein thing. But when a kid hops out of the back seat with a Dunkin's bagel and a hot chocolate, his or her coach knows that child's gonna be hyper for like 10 minutes and then tired and cranky for the next 50. So let's talk about the concept of good, better, best. Good, better, best. We approach eating on a scale of good, better, best. Here's good. Your child ate something. This isn't enough for athletes, but kids who are just lazing around the house can get by with some things, some suboptimal food in the morning. How about better? If they had some protein with their breakfast carbs, that would be better. Cereal bars, maybe as a last resort from time to time, 
maybe think eggs or bacon, some protein with the breakfast carbs, that's better. Here's best. Your child practices solid nutrition for at least three days leading up to the tournament or the event. And then, you know, maybe once a week, some off-plan treat or some off-plan food. That is better than three times a day eating at restaurants, crappy food, processed food, in insufficient nutrition. So in closing, from the founder of CrossFit, Greg Glassman, in his opus, his in his fitness in 100 words, he opened with this statement on nutrition. Eat meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, a little starch, and no sugar. I'll say it again. Eat meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, a little starch, and no sugar. If you need more help or you feel like your child needs guidance or maybe you need help guiding your child, you can talk to us here at CrossFit Edwardsville for free. Book a time to talk to one of our coaches about your child, maybe about our CrossFit Kids Fitness Program, which we have an amazing youth program to help your child become stronger, more confident for sports and perform better academically because these things go together. You can reach out to us at CrossFitEdwardsville.com and book a no sweat conversation to talk to one of our coaches. We'd be happy to talk to you about your youth athlete. Hey, this is a ton of information. Hopefully it's been helpful to you to help fuel your hockey animal, your wrestling star, baseball star, soccer, track, baseball, whatever it is, your star athlete, hopefully this is helpful to optimize their performance, optimize their health, their vitality, their life, their performance on the, on the field. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the podcast, and we will see you guys in the next one.